Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chen Dan from China Unicom. Today is my great honor to give this presentation, Comparison Between Open Ed Projects and ETSI MEC Standards. Together with my partners Li Kai from Nanan Cloud and Ding Jianfeng from Intel. Let, let's see. That's enough. You can go ahead. Okay. okay. Please <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the first part, I'll introduce the architecture of China Unicom new network, that is KubeNet, as well as the strategic layout and large scale the pilot of MEC iCloud of China Unicom. As we know, with the development and combination of SDN, NFA, big data and artificial intelligence technologies, the 5G network will become the key infrastructure in the digital transformation of all industries. 5G services have the characteristics of lower latency, large bandwidth, and more extensive connection. The traditional vertical 5G network architecture has many deficiencies in the aspect of resource sharing, the agile innovation, the flexible expansion, and simple operation and management. Uh, so, to effectively meet the service requirements of EMBB, MMTC, and the URC in 5G network, as well as enhance the industrial competitiveness, almost all the global telecom operators have started the network structure and re and, and transformation aiming to establish the DC-centered new networks. As shown in this picture, the 5G network of uh, China Unicom will be an elastic network based on the three-layer DCs, that is regional DC, the local DC, and the edge DC, which will quickly respond to and shorten the deployment time of new services. Towards the 2020 and two, 2022, uh, China will, uh, China, Unicom will construct the 70 to 80 the regional DCs, the 600 to 600 to 700 local DCs, and more than 6,000 other DCs with new management and business models. It is well known that the multi-access edge computing is a result of the ICT integration. So, for the telecom operators, tens of thousands of the uh, edge DCs are the best high qualities. High quality resources compared with OTT companies such as Tencent, the Alibaba, and Facebook, and so on. Uh, now, China Unicom is committed to building an open edge cloud service, services platform and providing the real service capabilities and unified APIs for applications developers, aiming to accelerate the incubation and the commercial use of. Uh, the innovative, the 5G services. There are three main characteristics of our ad platform. The first one is open. We can provide the open cloud API, the open management API, and the open the network, the capabilities, such as the LBS, the ANIS, the queues, the AI, the real-time transcoding, uh, the cloud re rendering, and so on. The second one is uh, agility. We can provide the agile and the past services, as well as the agile orchestration and management. So the customers can, app can apply the online resources on demand. However, there are also many challenges in the process of IDDC uh, construction. For example, the specific customized the servers and the lightweight open stack or containers are needed for adapting to the bad environment of the telecom access offices. Uh, so this slide shows the edge business progress of China Unicom. In 2018 MWC exhibition in Barcelona, China Unicom announced the large-scale iCloud pilots in 15 China provinces, including Beijing, Shanghai, Guangdong, and Shenzhen. So the pilot scenarios include but not limited to the video and games, the industrial manufacturing, the traffic and V2X venues, intelligent security, the tourist attraction, world projects, and so on. As the official, as official communication service partner for the 2022 Olympic Winter Olympics, we have started to establish the network infrastructure and verify the related services, such as the uh, 
such as uh, uh, 360 degree the VLA broadcast based on the 4G and at computing technologies. So the services of this video is based on of the faulty networks and the computing and computing technologies. Uh, China, now, China Unicom is expecting to work with more industrial partners in the edge cloud pilot the project and the commercial deployment, aiming to co-build the 4G oriented edge ecosystem. Up to now, we have more than 100 partners focus, focusing on the, high, the HD video, the enterprise and government services, the intelligent traffic and industrial in, and, and industrial IoT. Besides, we have established the Edge Cloud Innovation Laboratory in Beijing, investigate on the Stalin X project together with Intel and Nanan Cloud. In the following sessions, Li Kai and Ding Jianfeng will introduce our research and test results in detail. Okay, welcome, Li Kai. Uh, thank you, Dr. So, uh, the coming two uh, uh, points is about the uh, ETSI Mac uh, reference architecture and uh, uh, our decision and our practice. So <clears throat> before we go uh, detail that uh, uh, for there are some difference between uh, uh, telecom and the IT environment. In telecom there are some standards like uh, mandatory standard SANGPP and uh, some uh, reference standard like ETSI, right? So so far we uh, only have a, a clear standard defined by ETSI for the Mac. Uh, they define the framework, they define the interface, and they define the modules that uh, should be included. But uh, this is not mandatory, it's uh, recommended. So, uh, but uh, that's what we have. Uh, if we want to build an uh, edge, there are no successful ref reference that we can learn. So we we, we follow the standard and see what's the gap, what we can have from the open project, especially for the open edge project, and what we can do based on those projects. <coughs> so um, there are three uh, open projects uh, uh, related with uh, edge. Uh, those are Aquino, uh, actually announced by uh, a Linux Foundation, and the VCO actually is also under um, Linux Foundation. Uh, this morning, uh, Red Hat, uh, you know, announced it. Uh, you know, it's in the coming. Maybe there are a, a code base, and uh, also Cord, C O R D, uh, Central Office Architecture as a data center. So they have a different progress, and they have different missions. Uh, over overall, um, they are both to to uh, be deployed in the edge uh, data center for the telecoms. And uh, uh, we are not talking about the conf confusion relationship between Linux Foundation and OpenStack Foundation, right? Uh, but they are, most of them, uh, more, all of them are um, open technology uh, projects. And uh, um, the under layer, you can see the under layer, um, uh, sorry. The underlayer uh, uh, edge infra, inf, inf, infra is uh, you know should be the same. Like uh, most of them include open uh, open open stack and uh, Kubernetes, but the upper layer, especially the MANO and the SDN layer, are different. They select like um, ODL, ONAP, or uh, ONOS or XOS. Right? This is uh, what what uh, code have, have selected. So, so in summary, uh, OpenStack or Kubernetes should be the underlayer uh, infrastructure options, but uh, for the manual, manual, especially for the application um, orchestration layer or the uh, data plane layer, they might be different. Uh, so uh, currently, um, uh, you know, Aquino is announced in this year, right? 
And uh, VCO actually started from this year, and the code started from uh, uh, 2016. And um, uh, we, the, the version that they have released, uh, Aquino just released, uh, not Aquino, sorry, Starting X just released its uh, first version, right? And uh, VCO have two, two versions of demo, POC demo. And uh, code actually already in uh, 6.0 version. Uh, so this is uh, this is the uh, overall information from those three projects, and uh, let me look at take a look f uh, to in into their uh, architectures. Uh, first, the uh, VCO actually VCO zero we, we cannot find uh, some code base from online, but uh, we see some uh, you know press release that uh, is there are two demos that's already in one is in OCP Sami, another is. Um, I forget, but the two two version of demo, but the their, the technology they use actually is uh, uh, it's open source uh, software stack, and the, uh, this is a, the, this project is led by uh, uh, you know Open IRV Foundation, and uh, integrated with uh, uh, open open stack and uh, uh, some uh, uh, you know network project. Uh, this is called. Code is uh, like a, a, it actually it's a <coughs> you know use uh, uh, OpenStack doc as a um, as a uh, foundation foundation of the infrastructure. They also use XOS to to uh, you know uh, to do the like uh, workflow design uh, for the layout or the architecture, and they use ONOS as a data plane layer, and they also done some. Uh, Effort in uh, hardware redesign, like uh, they use um, uh, open rack uh, white box uh, switches as a as a, a hardware layer, and they also uh, 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 you know there are some um, license issue maybe, uh, uh, but they use some uh, open open VNF uh, project like uh, uh, like a VOLT VEPC those things, uh, so. This is uh, the, the card uh, architecture. Next page actually is more like, a, I should say it's a blueprint architecture. It's a not real, but uh, uh, it's designed, you know, it's a, the architecture announced from uh, AT&T when they f first released, uh, you know, this architecture. Uh, it's a, it's a most, uh, uh, you know, um, complexity uh, architecture among those three projects. And uh, you can see there are there are up layer lifecycle tool and uh, um, like uh, uh, you know uh, under layer local uh, card lifecycle also include some ops tools uh, in in the right side. Okay, so uh, uh, two projects actually is relate with um, um, Aquino. Uh, one is uh, a Starling X, and another is uh, Airship. Uh, uh, we, there are some, uh, you know, uh, different uh, scope. Um, uh, Starling X is more focused on infrastructure in one edge side, and the Airship do something like a deploy, deployment to multi side, and uh, um, you know they have some progress. Actually, they have some progress in this summit, but uh, uh, we saw some uh, synergy effort happen. In the past months, but they actually they have some overlap scope, uh, especially in the uh, deployment effort. So this is uh, what we have from the architecture level for those three projects. And then let me to take a look for the ETSI architecture. This is uh, actually is a um, architect reference architecture from ETS ETSI Mac. Uh, there are another architecture actually is uh, uh, called. Uh, Mac deployed in a uh, NF uh, in a uh, NFV environment, right? Uh, we more detail to to split uh, like manual uh, manual module into NFVO and uh, MEAO, right? Those things. But uh, let me take a take a look into this basic framework first. You can see as uh, a full um, architecture design from ETSI, there are several models. The first one is act, um, I should say, uh, there are uh, client-facing portal. There are user uh, app proxy 
to redirect the requ user request to different uh, edge. And they also have MEA, uh, MEO is actually for the edge orchestration, include VM, VNF orchestration and uh, application orchestration. And uh, MEPM is actually uh, related with lifecycle management for APP, for infrastructure, and for some uh, rule and request management. Actually, those rule and request management is related with to call the VNF or PNF API to enable the um, traffic through DNS handling, those things. And uh, there are Veeam. Actually, Veeam, most, uh, most, uh, in most uh, 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 department model, Veeam might be in the aggregate data center. And the uh, mobile edge host is about the NFE. Uh, edge and FEI. This is for for host uh, applications uh, service and the VNF in our edge side. Uh, so this is a uh, um, overall architecture. Actually, if you look into the uh, ETSI um, framework or the white paper, uh, you can also see some detailed definition for the MX. Uh, MX is about the uh, interface to external uh, external users. And the M, M is about the management interface. MP is about the platform interface. OK. So if we map this architecture with the project we, we introduced before, uh, we will skip VCO because uh, we, we didn't find a very detailed architecture or source code. So we just uh, compare ETSI uh, architecture with, um, with um, code and uh, Aquino. So uh, this is a, a, a diagram. The, the green, green boxes is about the, the, the module that uh, you can find in, a, uh, in, a, um, in code. Uh, like uh, they use uh, ODL as a data plane, right? They also uh, use uh, OpenStack and the Kubernetes as uh, uh, open infra. They use uh, a tool that actually to deploy the um, you know, OpenStack, and uh, they also use XOS as the uh, orchestration tool. But it's a very rough mapping, um, and uh, you can also can see there are some uh, other other things like uh, um, like uh, uh, portal or like uh, some uh, uh, OSS. In OSS, they have they provide a analytic model to pull those information happen in different. Uh, uh, VNF or infrastructures to uh, suppress the, those um, um, uh, LM, LM or the events uh, up to uh, OSS layer. Uh, when we go to um, Aquino, uh, this is another picture. Actually, it's uh, still a rough uh, design. Actually, um, I asked a question to uh, the guy uh, from at and that uh, when they designed the big picture, what, uh, you know, uh, uh, is uh, ETSI the mandatory reference or it's uh, something, but the, the answer is that uh, uh, ETSI framework is just a reference. So we only can do rough uh, comparison. Okay. So you can see, um, uh, we see some, uh, like, uh, um, from Airship, actually it's uh, for the V. And for for the uh, Star X is uh, to do the network network control, computer storage, and OS. Also, they define some uh, network edge and uh, uh, models like a cruiser, uh, uni unicycle, and tricycle models. Uh, and uh, they will use uh, you know um, ONAP as uh, orchestration, uh, but we think it might be too heavy. And uh, uh, they also use uh, a design a lightweight edge uh, orchestration module, but uh, we didn't find uh, some codes online. Anyway, um, they also have de has some design in admin model and the, uh, admin uh, user interface and the user interface. This is what we have. And uh, uh, we from the Aquino design, we saw some tools. Actually, it's very important to telecom for the OSS tools like. Uh, like uh, AI tools, testing framework, those things, and the inventory tools. Okay, so we will uh, later we will introduce what we, uh, what uh, our decision making and what we are going to design based on on those projects. Uh, 
So here we 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 are going to um, talk about the uh, China Unicorns Mac architecture. Um, before that, we will um, um, have some slide to to explain the uh, decision factors that we made uh, when we uh, do the selection from those uh, three projects. Um, the the de decision making factors actually uh, we this is a diagram to show the three angle, angles. One is uh, about the uh, readiness. It's a uh, it's module rich, mature mature to to support a production environment. Second is agency. You know because um, edge edge business is emerging and we we should decide you know uh, to. Um, get into this area as soon as possible. The third one is ROI, the, 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 the size of the every circle. Um, you know, when we replace with this uh, open technology, what's the return we can get? So, um, you know, it, this table is about some uh, options for the technologies. And our, our uh, consideration is about, first, we need to focus on those uh, more readiness uh, modules and uh, more urgent modules. Second, we will go into the hard one like uh, VNF, open VNF, it's, uh, we think it might be a little bit difficult. And for the white box uh, infrastructure, it's ongoing, uh, but uh, it's, it's uh, maybe not that production yet. So this is our uh, you know, strategy. You know, first, uh, to use the technology more mature, Second, we go to the di uh, difficult ones. And uh, regarding uh, code and uh, um, Aquino, this is a, a, a diagram we show from six angles. angles. Uh, first is uh, VNF capability, hardware re redesign, um, uh, mobile uh, edge uh, application orchestration, edge, NF, edge VNFI, and uh, edge uh, multi-edge deployment and the OSS data feeding. And uh, uh, from our uh, perspective, um, I think uh, core, we, we think that the core cover some scopes like uh, VNF um, open source and the uh, white box uh, hardware redesign. This is very important to uh, edge because in some edge data centers they need a re-architecture. Uh, based from the hardware, but we think it might be difficult. And uh, for the um, Airship Plus, um, uh, Starling X, uh, because Starling X is from uh, uh, Wind River, uh, there are some validation in the past one or two years that are based on the Wind River platform to support v, uh, NF, uh, VNFI, to support like a DP, uh, acceleration, uh, features, those things. So we think it, this, is, this might be more readiness uh, if we deploy it into an um, uh, uh, edge uh, environment. Uh, but I should say it's a not a uh, conflict because uh, if uh, code use a uh, uh, distro from starting X, it's, uh, it's durable, I think. And this is a, the, the design we have done. Uh, there are several color of the, the blocks. The, the purple one is actually the already existing from uh, China Unicorn, like uh, OSS. They already have some OSS platform. And they also have some uh, uh, NFV platform, uh, uh, NFVO, uh, NFV orchestration, and NFVM. This is the existing one. And uh, in some, uh, there are, so we add two black boxes in this diagram, these are most uh, commercial one, like the base, like the, uh, the VNF and PNF, um, Mac, or the UPF we, we use, right? And uh, uh, the yellow one and the green one actually we, we put from uh, open source, and uh, we use it as a base to start our, um, our edge journey. journey. And uh, the blue one actually is a third party, third party applications like uh, uh, MEAPP uh, and uh, 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 th those are ecosystem applications to support different edge 
So that's why uh, in Dr. Chan's besides there are ecosystem. The ecosystem is very important. And uh, uh, so the, the, the red one are, are those models we are going to develop. Uh, we can take a look. For the portal level, we might be have uh, three, we need three portal. One is for user, another for user admin. The third one is actually for ISV. They will upload the application to Edge. We need to, to check, scan, and then put into a, a application repository. And for the lifecycle side, actually uh, in the Mac, uh, in, in the ETS side design, there are uh, application like lifecycle and uh, uh, VNF lifecycle. We add two. Uh, another one, another two is I, I, uh, you know, uh, I, ICE lifecycle. In the future, we might add, add some path, you know, lifecycle management. And uh, on the layer, we ac actually, um, there are existing model to manage the data centers for cloud. But in the future, there were, we need some data center management for edge. So we, are, we want to add some uh, you know, ME, MEDC managers in the uh, Veeam layer. OK. So um, that's it. And uh, uh, Jim Feng will go through uh, some validation progress uh, we have done in the past months about the uh, starting X. OK. Thank you. So next, I will share uh, about some more detail of uh, studying X and, uh, and uh, the studying X validation result in our lab between, uh, between the collaboration. Uh, yeah, the, this page is uh, it's just a, a very uh, whole picture for the status of uh, uh, studying X project. As we know, uh, the studying X project has been announced uh, uh, several months before in last summit, and uh, recently uh, the Starting X code base has just released officially. Yeah, that's a good news for Starting X. And uh, Starting X, uh, look, uh, the position uh, is uh, it, it won't, uh, comparing to the ET, uh, uh, ETSI's uh, max spec. Uh, Starting X will do the infrastructure basic for the, all the. Uh, edge computing cloud. Uh, <coughs> from this uh, architecture in the in the corner, we can see uh, the the Starting X project actually is based on uh, OpenStack, uh, but Starting X has a lot of enhancement component comparing to uh, vanilla upstream OpenStack. Especially, we can see there are some configuration management, some uh, uh, fault management. Uh, host management and uh, some some other lifecycle software application lifecycle management component. Uh, that's uh, this is the part I want to uh, talk about uh, here uh, by comparing to uh, the ETSI Max back to uh, give give a clear uh, mapping relationship between the. Uh, Starling X actual code base and the UTSI Max spec. Uh, yeah, the first component I want to talk about is uh, fault management, and also the event suppression features. Uh, from the left, the left part is from the UTSI Max spec uh, for the about the fault manager part. Uh, there's some definition for the interface the feature requirement, uh, some other de uh, the definitions here. And uh, the right side as the actual uh, starting X running uh, the, the snapshot of the UI. Uh, we can see here the, in the, uh, the, the, the up, up picture, we can see uh, the, the red, in the right block is the part the Starling X has the enhancement work comparing to upstream OpenStack. It's for the advanced fault management features. And the bottom one, the, the, the second picture, uh, is talk about the event suppression and uh, the event management uh, the, the features. It's also the add-on feature comparing uh, upstreaming uh, upstream OpenStack, Cobase. 
yeah, this is very, uh, we can, from the testing and validation, we can see this part is very, very valuable to our customers. Uh, the next component is uh, about the system configurations. Uh, the system configurations is about uh, the, 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 uh, the mainly to, uh, to provide the advanced systems resource discovery and report features for the deployment. Uh, the, uh, again, uh, the, the similar, the left part is the spec uh, uh, pieces from the uh, ETSI Mac, and the, uh, the, left, uh, the bottom left picture is the architecture of a Stalin S project to how, how to do the uh, advanced system configuration features. Uh, yeah, here, uh, the, maybe the time is limited. I will not go through the, all the details of the design of the architecture, but we can see from the, uh, the snapshot of the UI, uh, we can have a glance, have a feeling about the, the feature of Stalin X, uh, about the system configurations. It's very important to say, to mention here, uh, the, the first picture, we can see the Stalin X UI can show the topology of a provider network topology. That's very important. It's, uh, this is a feature uh, the upstream uh, OpenStack cannot provide. Uh, the, we, can, we, we know about that the OpenStack can provide the, to, the tenant network topology in a video way, but the, for the provider network, that's the part that Stalin X has a more advanced feature to, uh, to the, to the easy, easier deployment management. And again, the single uh, in the middle and the bottom picture, uh, from this picture we can see from the Stalin X, uh, from by, <coughs> by, by UI or by API, the Stalin X can provide more detailed information about the uh, hardware resource. For example, the, for the network NICs, uh, the, the Stalin X can provide the detailed information about the MTU, about the bandwidth ability for some, uh, and for some other hardware uh, acceleration information, for example. Here we can see, uh, here in the bottom picture, we can see the, the, uh, this UI, this web, web page can provide a lot of uh, detailed information about the every network port. <coughs> yeah, this is the system configuration features. And uh, the next is the virtual machine, actually uh, management. Uh, here we have validation testing. Uh, the left web page means uh, uh, in, the, in our during our testing, sometimes we can just uh, shut down the physical machine, and uh, to uh, to trigger the Stalin X the virtual machine actually management component to work to do the live migration from the failure uh, uh, failure uh, node to a live node uh, from. Uh, from uh, the the ping the, the the result of the ping command, we can see there are three line. Uh, uh, it shows the, the the network cannot cannot be reached. It means the virtual machine cannot be accessed. But after from our uh, testing, we can see after after 30 seconds for the CentOS virtual machine, the virtual machine can be used again. So. Uh, from the validation, actually, the, 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 the data is very promising, actually. The 30, 13 seconds is quite uh, quickly as from the, for, the, for, for other regular uh, 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 signal. And uh, here is the code of the Stalin X component for the HA control. We can see from the code, we can see uh, this component is written by C++ code. Uh, next, next day is the controller actually uh, uh, optimization component. It's uh, for the uh, for the open stack or other uh, control plane services actually management. Uh, from the left, uh, this is a picture to mention to to uh, to to to, uh, to show the uh, Stalin X the deployment scale uh, scale define uh, definition. Uh, there are three different deployment modes for the Stalin S uh, project. 
the, the, the left one is just a single physical, a physical node, and the middle one is a, 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 the two node mode. Uh, so the, the, in this mode, it's uh, two, two nodes can be deployed, uh, the same control plane services, and uh, to be the actually uh, support uh, e to each other. And the third one is uh, the, the, the node is, uh, is more than three nodes. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's more like a regular OpenStack deployment for the, for other, uh, for the other uh, common private uh, cloud. Uh, here, uh, actually, uh, we are talking about the controller actually control is for the middle deployment mode. It's a two physical node deployment. Uh, from our testing, we can see uh, uh, sometime uh, we have three different uh, cases to test the, uh, the controller actually features. The first one is uh, in this table, in the up table. The first one we uh, manually to stop one controller uh, service. Here we use the normal dash compute services. We just stop it, uh, and after one second, uh, the the controller services will be restarted successfully. Yeah, and uh, the next, the second test case, we just uh, disable the service in the in the in, in the controller node. Then the result uh, will be the 15 seconds later. Uh, the 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 Nova dash computer service will be just started and uh, enabled again, very uh, promising. And uh, the third one is uh, if we start to shut down one controller host, the physical the physical node will be shut down. Uh, the how about the result? The result will. Uh, we can see from maybe this is a gap. We need to do more work to make it better. Uh, the, we can see the neutral, uh, the neutral service will be uh, needed to be restarted manually. The, yeah, this is our result can show. Uh, and uh, again, this is the picture. This is the, the, the UI snapshot. We can see during the during our validation after we disable or stop or just shut down the node. Uh, the services will, the warning and the, the uh, alarm will be shown in the fault management page, very visible management. And uh, the next is the inventory management. Uh, this part, uh, uh, it's, uh, the, the, this part the, 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 the feature is about how to uh, discover uh, the detailed hardware deformation and uh, expose, expose the, the feature to the high level software uh, to be more, uh, more sub smart or more efficient scheduling. scheduling. Uh, the first type of information is uh, the DPDK. Uh, DPDK cared about the information. Uh, in the system, maybe some uh, network hardware can, uh, can be used uh, together with the DPDK better or worse. Then the DPDK uh, software can, do, can, can get the detailed information about that for the, uh, for the better scheduling decision. The next is uh, uh, the, for the physical network needs, the, the bandwidth data can be collected also. Uh, the third one is the hardware acceleration devices information uh, for the in the edge computing cloud environment. For example, uh, the especially we can see uh, there's two important feature we can we can we can get the uh, we can get the, uh, from the hardware is the uh, SRV capability and the smartnic capability. Yeah, that's uh, very important for the smart scheduling. Yeah. This, this, uh, this is my part uh, of the detailed uh, information of the study X and the, uh, the mapping relationship to ETSI max back. And the next part is uh, the conclusion. I would like to uh, invite uh, Likai to, to have the conclusion again. Thank you. Um, you know, add one, one comment to the slides that showed in this page. Um, the dual model actually is very important to our edge. Um, uh, in most of our deployment in the cloud, there are three, mod three nodes that uh, you know, are normally required because to avoid the split, uh, your brain split uh, to a, a database. But uh, in Star X, they provide that two, mod two, two node model, especially for the edge that's uh, in very limited space. Okay. 
So the con conclusion here is, uh, you know, um, among those three projects that we showed in the slides, um, you know, uh, Cord and Aquino have, uh, you know, have a code base and they have some progress in version release. And uh, they, uh, we think it's more mature for us to start. And uh, between Cord and Aquino, um, uh, Cord is we, with more scope in VNF, uh, you know, open source and uh, hardware, uh, hardware, um, you know, integration for central office reacted purpose. And Aquino is more focused on, uh, you, know, uh, you know, edge infra and the Veeam things. Uh, you know, according to the uh, China Unicorns roadmap, uh, uh, we will keep airs on those projects. Actually, this is not a final decision, but uh, we will see the progress. And mapping to ETS standards, you know, even it's not a mandatory standard, it's a reference. And uh, we see some gaps uh, for those, those three projects, uh, especially in the, you know, mobile edge, um, application of just teaching, like uh, like uh, the question asked in last session, what, who, how to uh, do the application roaming, you know, between different, uh, uh, you know, edge side those things, and uh, for MEP for the lifecycle modules, and uh, also have some there are some work uh, which is uh, in most uh, open source uh, an open stack company or provider they may link those experience is to integrate with uh, VNF and PNF uh, functions, like uh, how to call those APIs to enable the traffic things, DNS handling things. And uh, um, we also show some features in Starling X. Uh, it's not, not totally mature, mature yet, but I think it's a good start. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Uh, any questions or? Okay, we are the question. run out of our time. Uh, so thank to you. What, excuse me, can we take one question? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, one question is uh, uh, to what extent do you think that your traditional telco VNFs will share resources with these new MEC applications? Whether there will be new, like, ice layer for the MEC or whether they will share the same infrastructure with your telco services? Sorry, um, uh, can, can you repeat your question? Oh, uh, are you planning to use the same open stack with your telco uh, services like your U U UPF and uh, with the MEC, the same open stack? You mean uh, we will use the same infrastructure to support VNF and uh, ME APPs? Yeah, are you planning to use the same infrastructure? Uh, they can not? be the same, uh, you know, for the underlayer infrastructure because um, uh, uh, for the technology side, they, they can be the same. But uh, in some cases, the, when, uh, when you look into a telecom, they have different operation teams to support the VNF operation and the application operation. So they might require some isolate, you know, environment to support VNF and uh, um, application, so. Yeah, uh, just a question how China Unicom is planning to separate or use the same infrastructure layer. Uh, so for China Unicom, uh, the, so for, uh, I think for almost all the global the telecom operators, the infrastructure of the VNF such as the UPF and the MEAPP is the same. Um, but I think the most important that at the access offices, uh, maybe the scale is very small. Uh, so we have the uh, several the, the, the smaller servers. So I think that uh, we have the specific requirement of the servers, such as we need the small scale servers, and uh, we need the high performance the servers, uh, inclu uh, supporting the AI uh, and uh, other the computing capabilities. Uh, so for China Unicom, and uh, uh, when, we, when there's the uh, construction of the IDC and the regional and the local DCs, 
maybe the servers are different, uh, but at the HDCs, we use the same infrastructures from all the, the WinAFs and the ME app. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.